Have you ever had the aching desire to wake up before dawn? Drive several hours to stand around on a frozen lake just to freeze your balls off all day? Have you ever had the burning need to face some of the harshest conditions known to man? To chase a fish so stupid that it can't tell the difference between a tungsten jig and a minnow? Well, brother, ice fishing may be for you. One shot. Well, good afternoon from the great state of Maine in my damn basement. I figured it was about time for me to make a video down here since I spent a bunch of time making this quote-unquote studio. It's just a, it's a wood shop with a painted wall. Um, I've had the itch for ice fishing. A lot of guys in the northern part of the state have gotten out already, caught some really good fish. And unfortunately, I'm a little bit of a bigger fella, and there hasn't been safe ice for me down here yet. With that said, I am going fishing the day after Christmas with a couple buddies. We're going to a trout pond, and I'm pretty pumped. But in the meantime, I wanted to feed the addiction and answer a question that a couple folks have already asked me this year and asked me in the past, and that's, what do I need to buy to go ice fishing? So today's video is going to be two parts. First part is going to be the bare minimum of what you need to get into the sport. And then the second half is going to be some tips uh, on some gear that I think you should own and that I think is worth investing money in up front so that you're not wasting your time with some other stuff. And if you know you like the sport already, it's good to have this stuff. So first and foremost, obviously should be self-explanatory, but what the hell, you need warm clothes. You're going to be standing outside all damn day on a frozen lake in one of the northern states or in a province. It's cold, man. I'm not going to tell you what to buy, I don't know your sizes, I don't know what you like, I don't know your favorite color. But the only advice I can give you is get a base layer. I, I fished most of my life in a Carhartt suit when I was younger. I bought a float suit probably 10 years ago, and that was nice. Two years ago I switched over and uh, started fishing in a base layer of merino wool, and I've never been more comfortable. It's lighter, you can move more. I literally just throw a nice pair of Carhartts on it and a hoodie or a jacket, and I'm good 90% of the time I'm out there. Uh, part number two is a way to get into the ice. And again, if you live in one of the northern states or in a province of Canada, you should own an axe or an ice chisel. It, it, it's, it's simple, they're cool, you know, maybe you live in an apartment building, whatever, go buy one, they're really neat. This will do you for the first, you know, few months, or sorry, a few weeks of the season, getting through the ice, figuring out if you really like this sport or not. Um, after that, you probably buy yourself an auger, but I'll talk about that afterwards. So as far as cost of entry is concerned so far, you're at zero. You should own one of these already. You should own warm clothes. Now the second two things you're going to need, you're going to have to spend some money. And it's bait and a way to keep it, and then the traps themselves, or, or a means to catch the fish. So first and foremost, if you're in Maine, there's bait shops all over. You can use worms, but live minnows are allowed and preferred. But, you know, check what lake you're in. Certain stuff isn't allowed in certain areas. I know in other parts of the country you have to fish dead minnows or grubs or whatever, but... Bait's not going to be too expensive, and it's a day-to-day -day thing, so we're not going to factor that really into the cost of entry. What you are going to need is a way to keep it, uh, and the simplest method is a bucket. If you don't own a bucket, go to Lowe's, $2.99. That's the first thing you got to buy. Now, you obviously got to keep the fish alive in the bucket, so the uh, best way to do that is an aerator. These are, I think, $20. They run on D batteries. The D batteries will last you two days. Um, you can use oxygen tablets, but again, those you kind of constantly buy. So spend the money. Like I said, it's like 20, 25 bucks, but we'll call it 30 to round up. Now for the third thing you need. Uh, fourth thing. Wow. Counting. Not my strong suit. Fourth thing, you're going to have to spend some money regardless of how you're doing it, unless you want to fish with a nice long six-foot open water rod. And because I live in Maine, we're, we're talking about what you need in Maine and Everybody up here fishes with tip-ups or ice fishing traps. We're allowed five lines, so it doesn't really make sense to just jig one and have a dead stick, but some guys do jig for pan fishing, for togue, and stuff like that. But the majority of people fishing here are going to be fishing ice traps or tip-ups. And for the sake of the video, for the cost of entry, Eagle Claws and Berkeley tip-ups run $10 to $15. So for five of them, we'll just say $70. So you're at $100 bucks right now. And these will do you. I got plenty of buddies to fish with these, catch a lot of great fish, have a lot of fun. Um, this, however, is one of the things I think you should upgrade or just buy the expensive going in. But 
If you don't know what you're doing or you just want to test the water or you think these are fun, go with these. Now on those traps, you're going to have to put line or you're going to have to put hooks. And there's really expensive line and really expensive hooks, but for the sake of the video, basic ice fishing line is about $5.99 for 100 yards. That'll do you. Put 15, 20 on each. If a fish runs you out 20 yards, you're slow and you should have gotten to the trap faster. And if you're fishing, you should probably already have some eagle claw snells. This is basic fishing stuff, fishing off the dock as a kid, but what the heck. Sake of the video, we'll say another five bucks. So you're at $110 for total expense, getting in, getting out there, seeing if you like the sport. And that's all it's going to take. For the second half of the video, I won't talk, I'll run through the, the categories again and discuss some things that you really should buy and you should have if you're going to do this, regardless of what stage of the sport you're in. And for the clothing section, the two things you need, idiot picks and creepers. They're called idiot picks because if you need them, you're probably acting like an idiot. Or when you were a little kid, you had your mittens on your strings and they went down the back of the coat. Those are called idiot mittens. So tons of guys do videos on these. You use them to claw your way out of the ice. Buy them. They're healthy. This is more specific to the state of Maine, though. Creepers. We have a lot of glare ice. Uh, it's when the sun melts the snow on top, levels it off, super slippery. Um, it's stupid, but these 1099 little thing can save your life. Uh, I've had a friend bust up his elbow really bad. He's had like two, three surgeries on it. Uh, last season we were fishing up north and a guy was screaming for help across the lake. He had slipped and fallen on his auger and took like 160 stitches to put him back together. Like we got him out of there, he lived, but if he was by himself or if he'd have landed slightly different, he could have died simply because he slipped on the ice. So buy these stupid things. And this kind of falls under that whole you live in the northern part of the country or the continent. You should own this shit anyways. Um, additionally, I fish with the Garmin inReach. I bought this for open water fishing because I go offshore and it's nice to be able to send text messages. Um, if you're doing anything out in the woods, out away from civilization, the peace of mind that this brings is great. And also, like I said, when I'm 30 miles offshore, I can text my, my people and say, hey, grab tartar sauce, we caught fish, or somebody needs to pick up steaks because I'm a terrible fisherman. For the second thing, which is getting through the ice, you should invest in an auger. Uh, and by invest, I mean spend 40 to 60 bucks to get yourself a hand auger because if you're willing to put in the effort, this will get you through the whole season. Um, I bought this eight years ago and it's still kicking. Uh, I've replaced the blades once. Um, it's a pain in the butt to drill through two feet of ice, but it'll work uh, and it's nice and lightweight. But if you find out you really do like the sport, then I recommend you invest in an actual auger. This here, I think, is an Eskimo rocket that I bought five years ago, and it's still kicking. The one I had before that actually didn't die. I just got rid of it because it was older than me, and it weighed 50 pounds. Um, a lot of guys run these. A lot of guys are running uh, electric ones now that run off batteries. Um, benefits of that are they're lighter. Benefits of this, it doesn't run out of juice, but you can break it. Uh, and then the new trend is just taking the auger bit itself and putting it on, like, a brushless 40-volt drill like a Makita or something like that and you get the best of both worlds where it's super light you can switch out the batteries it's reliable um, but yes yeah, the smell of gasoline in the morning is kind of nice and then for the for the final two things um, number one is is a container for your bait you are going to be out on the ice it is cold uh, this here's a Yeti bucket they work great they're insulated and you can see in the top and the lids have a hole in them you could also just take an old cooler pop a hole in it throw the aerator down through it or a lot of places make uh, bait chests. Uh, Vrabel makes some really nice ones. Uh, they're a little pricey, but like I said, they seal, they fall over, the bait's not gonna go everywhere, and they're insulated, so it's gonna keep the water from freezing when you're out on the ice. And then finally, and the uh, thing that may cause, you know, cause a little controversy is, is trap preference. Um, I know at West a lot of folks got beaver dams or Vrabels and tip-ups, but like I said, there's, there's two brands here in the state of Maine, and that's Heritage and that's Jack Traps. And I'm pretty sure more people fish jack traps because they're a little fancier and, and they look a little nicer and, and they are handmade, but Heritage is a main brand too and I catch a lot of nice fish. Um, so it's all preference. There's just some slight differences. They both function very similar where you put the flag in a cradle, you put the line down in the water, a fish takes it, trips the flag, everybody screams, everybody goes running. Um, so it's, it's up to you what you want to buy as far as a brand. Um, but I recommend spending the money in the beginning of the sport to get a nice set of traps because they'll last you. Um, 
And then just some bonus things to make the experience a little better. You have a sounding weight, which is how you tell how deep it is in the bottom. I'm not going to explain that. We'll do it in a later video. Weights, because obviously if you're fishing deeper than a couple feet, you're going to need to get down. And then a de-hooking method. Um, and this here is what I think is probably one of the most important things that a lot of guys don't actually have or don't think is important. If you're fishing for fun, you need to get the fish back in the water as soon as possible because they will freeze their, their fins, their gills, their eyes. And if you're fiddling around trying to get a hook out, you're going to kill the fish. This little method, this little jobby, hooks on, pops it, done, photo, back in. So uh, that's it. That's the video. Hopefully this was, was helpful. I'm going to throw up a whole bunch of links and gear lists if you want to buy stuff. But I hope to see you out there. If you see a bunch of big, huge guys being loud, cooking food on the ice, it's probably me and my buddies. Come say hi. We'll shoot the shit. Um, I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, the next time I'm, I'm, I know I'm fishing is the Sebago Derby. Hopefully I fish between now and then. But I think that's the 19th of February. Uh, I hope to see you guys there. Party on. Thank you.